So now I'm going to talk about praise, the power of praise. Now there's three things that we do in a worship service. We praise God, we thank God, and we worship God, right? All these three things are related, but they're not all the same, okay? They might look the same in outward expression, but they all have different purposes, okay? Psalms 29 verse 2, it says, Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Worship relates to His holiness. Worship is an expression that looks like bowing down, an expression that we fall face down. It's the bowing and the posturing of your body that lowers itself, okay? Psalms 107 verse 1. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for He's good. His mercy endures forever. Thanksgiving relates to what is goodness, right? It is, we thank Him for what He has done, okay? But here, Psalms 48 verse 1. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. It's a privilege and it's appropriate. It's the right thing to do, to praise Him. Why? Because He is great, okay? Years ago, uh, maybe five years ago, I woke up in the morning to an open vision. How many of you guys have open vision sometimes? Where you look, you open, your eyes might be closed or open, it doesn't matter, but you're seeing like a movie in front of you. And this is how God communicates, okay? And this is normal for Christians. If you're not getting this, you can, and it's just normal Christianity, okay? And I saw an open Bible, and I saw Psalms chapter 8 verse 2 and I began to read the Bible in this vision it's like God said read this you know so it says there let me read it to you so I don't say it wrong Psalms chapter 8 verse 2 out of the mouths of babes and nursing infants you have ordained strength because of your enemies that you might silence the enemy and the avenger okay he calls the avenger the enemy who's the enemy guys the devil and his demons, right? Out of the mouths of babes, who are babes? Babies. That means anyone can do this, even little babies. You open your mouth and you begin to speak of his greatness, of who he truly is to you and what he has done for you. And the devil shuts up. Why do we... Why do we need to do this? Because how many guys know the Bible says that the Satan goes around, he's the accuser. He'll even put thoughts in your mind and tell you you're nothing, you're worthless, you're dirty. God doesn't like you because you're a bad Christian. And you hear these thoughts, not only that, you hear other people say it to you. People you love, people who love you even, but they don't love you the right way say it to you. Okay? And he wants you to feel guilty, condemned, feel like you're a second class citizen or Christian and what are you going to do when you feel like you're not good enough and you're second class what are you going to do you're going to be a victim right you're like, I'm not I'm no good God doesn't want me why do I need to praise him I just might as well eat worms right but here's what praise does and this the Lord spoke this to me in a vision it shuts the enemy's mouth it says so right here that you might silence literally shut them up in Matthew 21, verse 16, do you not, this is the Pharisee, do you not hear what these are saying? And Jesus said to them, yes. Have you never read out of the mouths of babes and nursing infants, you have perfected praise? Now, if you go back to the Old Testament, it says you have ordained strength. Why did Jesus quote it? differently why because ordained strength is perfected praise when you praise him he ordains strength to you you have supernatural strength I'm saying to you do you guys believe this you could be having a bad day you know the cat bit you in the toe scratch you in the face you scar you think you're gonna look you're gonna walk around with this. and you know and you come to, you, 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 you don't want to praise God because you feel like, but you say, I will praise him and shut up the accuser, the one who comes to condemn you. 
And all of a sudden, his voice just goes silent. And then you even hear God's voice. There's many different definitions, meanings to the word praise. It's only translated praise in English, but in the Hebrew, it means a lot of different things. Some of the meanings that I like is the word Google. It actually, uh, it is translated rejoice many times in the Bible, but it means to spin around and around with wild emotions. Does that look very conservative to you? Okay. Now worship, you can do it with silence. You can bow your face, you can worship God, you can fall on your face. But praise is something that is manifested. You guys ever see the soccer games? Somebody scores a goal and they praise the guy that scores the goal? They go kind of mad, huh? Well, that definition is in the Bible for church folks like you and I to praise God. Why should the soccer player receive more praise than Jesus? Or the football player, or Michael Jordan? Huh? I got a problem with that. All right, anyway. The word in the Hebrew, it means to go nuts or go mad. To make mad. It's like, <laughs> you know, it's like jumping up and down and just, <laughs> okay. I really want to confront the religious spirit that keeps you guys frozen like a pickle juice Christian, you know. What can I do? What can I do? Well, what, what do they think? Well, forget all that. Okay. That's all religion. It don't work. You don't want it. Psalm 66 verse 8 says, Let the sound of his praise be heard. Praise has an extroverted nature. Okay. And like I said, meditation is not praise. Okay, now, somebody say, I want to praise God my way. Well, there's no such thing as my way. If you say you want to do it your way, you're telling God, you are the boss. You got to do it his way according to his word. And it has to be manifested. It's not just put your hand in your pocket, <laughs> put your hand on the seat in front of you and just, I see this in church. I'm like, dude, lift up thy voice with strength. Lift it up. That's, neat. That's the King James Version, by the way. Be not afraid. Lift up your voice with strength. Lift it up. Here, get that one. Be not afraid. Don't be scared. How many of you guys have been scared to praise God? You see people just like your friends around you, your buddies, they're like, man, <sighs> really? I saw what you did yesterday. You really don't love God like you pretend you do. Because I know what you said to her yesterday. Just put those hands down. Stop acting like you love Jesus. You don't love Jesus. Remember what you did yesterday. See, that's the accuser. See what I'm saying? Now it could come in your mind or it could come through a friend. What, what shuts him up? Do it anyways. Open your mouth and begin to praise Him. Okay? <coughs> Psalms 40, verse 3. He has put a new song. That's a song that's never been sung before. Musicians here, God can empower you with supernatural ability to begin to sing a song you've never learned. I've done this so many times. The words will come and not even the notes. And there's this bubbling out of wisdom from God. And you sing the word of God. You sing the thoughts of God. You sing the heart of God. And when you begin to sing this, the atmosphere of heaven fills the house. And the word here, it says, he has put a new song in my, in my mouth. Praise. The word praise here is tehillah. Which in the Hebrew speaks of a spontaneous song that comes out of you. How many of you guys have heard Christy do that? Isn't it awesome? Yeah. Do you feel something break? Yeah. Now, I'm going to tell you guys something. I know a lot of you guys like your songs, okay? Some of you guys like Hill Song. Some of you guys like IHOP. Some of you guys like Maranatha. No. Okay. okay. I used to listen to Maranatha, and I got really filled with the Holy Ghost, okay? I'm that old, okay? Anyway, and you can sing those songs and learn those songs. 
And so many people are used to it. If you don't play their songs, they get kind of mad, right? Because it provides structure. It provides, you know, you know what you're going to sing. You know how you're going to sing and all that. You're comfortable. But there's no power in that. It's good. The power is in the new song. The power is when God sings through you. The power is when you spontaneously begin to say how you feel about him in song. And all of a sudden heaven shows up. And you have felt God and you touched the heart of God. And you're like, oh my gosh. I just let myself go and I experience God. Do not be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Singing to one another in songs and hymns and spiritual hymns. Okay, anyway. Now, I have to move a little faster. Are you guys getting this? Is this making sense to you? <coughs> so, <coughs> I'll be honest with you tonight, I didn't want to praise God. You guys, I didn't want to get up to the front because my body is sore. My, my lungs are, you know. But you know what? I'm not going to let my body tell me how I should live or what I should do. Okay? This thing is leaving as I'm speaking. Psalms 90 verse 14. That I might tell of your praise. The word here is tehillah again. The spontaneous praise. In the gates of the daughter of Zion, I will rejoice. The word here is gugol. I told you it means to spin around with wild emotions. Okay? In your salvation. The word there means deliverance. How do you guys see these people spin around and they're having a good time? Okay? They are doing what the Bible says because the Holy Spirit is empowering them to be like Jesus. Okay, let me read to you here. 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 14. And you can go there in your Bible if you want. Somebody give me some water. 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 14. Then David danced before the Lord with all his might. Did you hear that? He wasn't just dancing. He was dancing with all of his might. Why was he dancing with all of his might? They were bringing the ark in. The ark represents what? The presence of God. That's where God lived in the Old Testament. Okay? David wanted to bring the ark to the city of David. So, he had the priest carry. And then while he was, while they were carrying, he began to dance and offer sacrifices and they played music loudly and they began to shout, okay? So how many guys want to carry the presence of God? And David was wearing a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. Now the ark of the Lord came into the city of David and Micah, who is David's wife, but here she's called the daughter of Saul. Now, why did they call her the, why did the Bible call her the daughter of Saul? Because she's like her dad, a man pleaser in this part of the scripture. Let me read on. Looked, she looked through the window and saw King David leaping, whirling before the Lord. And she despised him in her heart. I'm going to tell you guys something. When you get at extravagant in praise, when you let yourself go, people are going to despise you. Are you willing to live with that? They're going to judge you. They're going to say mean things about you. They're going to say you're fake. You're showing off. You're dancing to show off to the women. You're, you're trying to get attention. That's what they're going to say. But if you know why you're doing it, don't worry about what they're saying. She was, she was so worried about his image because that's, his, that's her husband. He's the king. Now, she's a princess, of course. She grew up in the nice castle and all that. So she's, you know, well-respected. So is David. He's king of Israel. Do you know he unclothed himself? He disrobed himself? He's literally in his undergarments. In 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 20. Then David returned to bless his household. And Micah, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet with David and said, How glorious was the king of Israel today? uncovering himself today in the eyes of the maidens, the maids and the servants, as one of the base fellows shamelessly uncovering himself. 
So David said to Micah, It was before the Lord who chose me instead of your father in all his house to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord, over Israel. Therefore, I will play music before the Lord. I will even be more undignified Whew. than this. I will humble. I will be humble in my own sight. David says, I'm being humble. And you know what? I am going to get more undignified. You, you keep your dignity. You guys can keep your dignity. I'm going to let myself go. There's nothing else worth letting go for, right? But as for these maidservants of whom you've spoken, by them I will be held in honor. Therefore Micah, the daughter of Saul, had no children to the day of her death. You know what? The worst thing that could happen to a woman was to not have babies. It was a curse that is very, it's a shameful curse to have in those days especially. Okay, now let me tell you guys a story. Uh, years ago, I woke up from a dream. I mean, you guys like dreams. Now, let me tell you the story behind the dream. The night before, I was crying, literally crying. I'm a grown man crying out to God. It's a good thing, by the way. Boys, if you don't cry, then you're too tough to cry. Well, I won't go there. Anyway, I was weeping before the Lord, saying, God, why? I went to this church. It was a Vietnamese church. And they were into a lot of law and just really dead, okay? And I thought, you know, they're my people. Maybe I can bring a little life into this church. So basically, without God's direction, I kind of anointed myself and went, thinking that I would bring some life into it. Well, so I went in there and I started lifting my hands and I started just praising God and and they're looking at me like, now some of them really liked it, but there's the daughter of Saul's in the house, if you get what I'm saying. They begin to despise me. Why is he so, what's he trying to do? Draw attention to himself? You know, no, I was trying to bring life in this dead place, thank you very much, but I didn't say that, okay? But it hurt me so bad because she called the pastor and the pastor called me and and told me, you know, uh, can you calm down a little bit? You know, you're distracting some people and they're really angry. And so the Lord Jesus, <laughs> you guys, this is so cool. He appears to me in a dream. And he's wearing this white gown. And he looks at me and I, can, I can't see him. It was in a, in a dream. He didn't reveal his whole future to me. I don't know why. And he said, follow me. And to my surprise, he began to whirl around and started dancing and skipping along. He was like this happy-go guy. It was so awesome. He was so happy and so full of life and so he's smiling the whole time. And I said, yes, Lord, I'm following him. Then he stops and he points at this car. It's like an Oldsmobile. Okay? It's an old car, but it looked... It was kept new. It looked really nice. Then I saw a Vietnamese woman, which a lot of times speaks of the church. It was a Vietnamese church. Okay? And she was very pretty. And I was like, wow. And I walked up to her and looked at her again. She wasn't that pretty anymore. She was old and she was wrinkled and she was, like she was about to die. She had hardly any life left in her. Now, we used to do a lot of fun things. They had a lot of money, these guys. They would take me out to eat. A lot of them did like me because they knew that I really had this passion for God and they were kind of curious, you know. But she looked like death. And the Lord Jesus looks at me and he says, follow me. And I said, yes, Lord. He turns around and he goes exactly the opposite way. So what does this mean? I wake up, I'm like, what does this mean? He was telling me that I had to leave the church. If they have a form of godliness and deny the power of God, you must turn away from them. Listen, guys, a church that does not praise God, that is offended by extravagant praise, is a dead church. A Christian that does not 
get excited about Jesus or doesn't not demonstrate extravagant praise and despises it is a dead Christian. So if, now I'm going to get in your face in a nice way. If you've been offended by people's extravagant praise, check the Bible and ask the Holy Spirit, why God? Do I have dead bones in me? Okay? If you will admit it, God's grace is sufficient for you. Okay? Is that crazy? Praise is God's address. Really? Psalms 23, verse 2. Let me read it to you. But you are holy, enthroned, or inhabit the praises of Israel. It literally means, the Hebrew word means to settle, to dwell, or to live. He lives in the praises of his people. It's his address. Praise is the way through his gates and into his presence. Let me read to you Psalms 100 verse 4. Enter in his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. The word here is tahila, which is a spontaneous praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generation. Let me tell you guys, did I just read three truths to him? He's good, his mercy is everlasting, okay? And his truth endures to all generations. Do these truths ever change? No. Okay. We praise him for these truths, all right? So the truth never change. Why should we stop praising him? Our circumstances might change. We might have a good day or bad day. But God's truth is eternal. Do you want to get out of your circumstance? What are you going to do? Praise him. In your negative circumstance, right? It's very easy, right? I'll tell you what. When you get on the other side of eternity, you will not have a chance to praise God in bad circumstances. You will not be able to offer him the sacrifice of praise. You won't be... You know, when I see somebody going through hard times, they're struggling, somebody died in their family... And they still lift their hands. And they still bless God. And they still declare his goodness and faithfulness. That's somebody I know has strength. And they just open their mouth and begin to declare the goodness of God. Isaiah 61 verse 3. To counsel those who mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for, beauty for ashes. The oil or the anointing of joy. Did you know there's an anointing to release joy? For mourning and the garment of praise in place of the spirit of heaviness. The word heaviness there means depression, literally. God's got a solution for your depression. Put on the garment of praise. You literally have to put this on. It's a choice you make. You manifest praise. When you're not feeling well. Right now, some of us are sick. Don't stop praising him because you're sick. If you're depressed and lonely, you can put on the garment of praise. And drive out that demon. It is a demon, guys. It's spirit of heaviness. It actually puts you down. And there are people that allow it to go so far, they will try to take their own life. Okay, there's a story in the Bible. I'll just quote it because I don't want to read it. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, three nations come against Israel. And they're gonna, they want to wipe out Israel. And they're outnumbered, maybe 10 to 1. I, don't, I can't remember the numbers. And you know what God tells them through a prophet? Send out those who will praise him. Okay, Send out the praisers. So the, they sent out these, the, the, these musicians and, and singers and they began to... Sing praises to God. And as they begin to declare, for the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Guess what happens? The enemy began to fight amongst themselves. And they wiped themselves out. 
And it took three days for these Israelites to even strip them of their spoil. Is that crazy? So how many guys have enemies? I'm not talking about natural enemies. I'm talking about demons. That torment you. That want to take you out. That want to destroy you. Yeah, these demons want to oppress you. They want to tell you to keep your hands down. Shut up. Oh, here's another story. Acts 16, 25. It says, by midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundation of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone, get that, everyone, every prisoner who was chained, their chains fell off. Now, ooh, I'm going to stop here for a little bit. Guys. These were not county jails like they have today. These are like dungeons, okay? Paul and Cyrus, they were put in prison for not anything they did wrong, for preaching the gospel, okay? But that didn't stop. That didn't get them depressed. That didn't make them stop. They began to sing praise to God, and the whole foundation of the place shook. Supernaturally, all the chains... Fell off. Shackles fell off of everybody. How many guys know you got some family that have shackles on their hands and feet? How many guys know you have some, some family, some friends that are in prison? Now, in the Bible, Paul and Cyrus, two men. It says that the prisoners were listening to them. The Hebrew, I mean, in the Greek, if you read that and you research it, they were listening intentively. They were actually listening to these guys praise God. And I believe that's why their chains got broken. That's why God not only broke the chains of Saul and Cyrus, broke the chains of these people who were connecting with them. And guess who were in the prisons? Criminals, murderers, liars, thieves. Bad people. Your praise. Maybe some bad people in your school. I don't know. Maybe some bad people in your, uh, you guys, most of you guys don't work yet. Maybe some in your class. The reason why they are the way they are, mostly because they're being controlled by demons. He is the God of this world, Satan. And he's got them chained up in unseen shackles. I bet you guys, if you begin to praise God, when you leave your class, go to another class, or you, every day you make that, you, you, you find some time, get together, you're going to praise God, or just sit there and praise God in your classrooms. Something else might happen to them. Okay? Let me take this deeper. How many of you guys know there's some people bound up by chains and shackles in the church? How many of you guys have gone Sunday morning and you feel like a heaviness, like a death? I'm like, man, I was singing this morning in my room, it was easy. How come I came to church and it's so heavy? Why is that? Because there's oppression. There's religious demons that are binding people who go to church. If the young people will begin to sing praises to the Lord and spontaneously let themselves go, the whole church might get free from their shackles and bonds and bondages. How many of you guys want to Break some chains and shackles off of your friends and brothers and sisters in the church. I'm going to tell you guys, do not waste your difficult times on this side of eternity. You can bring that to God as a sacrifice of praise. You're not going to have difficult times on the other side of eternity. When you have your resurrected body and you're with him in glory. But when you're going through pain. When you're hurting and misunderstood. And you begin to declare the goodness and the faithfulness and the glory and the majesty of Jesus. You know what? That is true witness to the heathens and even Christians in bondage. When do we praise God? Psalms 145 says, every day I will bless you and I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day and forever and ever. Here and when you get your resurrected bodies. 
and you're hanging out with the angels. You guys remember the story about David when Saul was trying to kill him and he had to flee for his life? His own father-in-law, the king, who has this huge army, is trying to murder him for no, no good reason. Now, how many of you guys know that that's some bad circumstances? Okay? That's a tough time when your own dad wants to kill you. Feels rejected, feels betrayed, and he's running for his life. He's going to the enemy's camp, and he pretends to be a mad guy so they don't kill him because he's their enemy. He used to kill them in battle. He goes to, and for some reason in those days, they had respect for mad people. They just leave them alone. So David pretends to be mad so he doesn't kill them because if he doesn't kill them, his dad was going to kill him. Psalms 34, verse 1. A psalm of David, when he pretended madness before Abimelech, who drove him away. And this is the word of God I'm reading. And he departed. I will. He decided. That's the decision of his will, right? Bless the Lord at all times. I bless the Lord even when my dad is trying to kill me. I will pray. His praises shall continually continually be in my mouth will always I am not going to let my dad trying to kill me me having to live in the land of my enemies to hide from a man who just gone mad who's supposed to love me stop me from praising God what's stopping us can anything should anything stop you are you guys getting this this is going to change the way you view life and God and your circumstances. Use your circumstances to offer him what is precious. What he, what moves his heart. Do you know when you begin to turn your heart towards God and begin to praise him for who he is? You stir his emotions. He's ravished with love over you. I'm going to talk about that scripture again. It says you have ravished my heart with one look in your eyes. The enemy's tactic is to get you to look away from God. But if you can overcome by faith, we can praise God, enter into worship, because you have to break through the praise to enter into worship, and begin to gaze at the eyes of Jesus. The Bible says he's moved with wild emotions. His heart is ravished. It burns for you. Man. What if you come to the place when nothing bothers you and you can walk eyes with Jesus. Ooh, we're going to see the life and the power and the glory of God in our midst. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Praise his holy name. David spoke to his own soul. Have you guys ever done that? You have all kinds of crazy thoughts going through your mind and say, be quiet. Praise God. Soul. It's like David saying, David, what call you that one? Stephen. I don't care if you're sick. You can praise God. Because he's great and worthy and greatly to be praised. Because the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. That's why I praise him. I base, I, I, I hold on to this truth. I believe this no matter what I'm going through. Sometimes it doesn't feel like God is good because you're thinking, where are you God? Why, do you, why hast thou forsaken me? I wrote this song. It's, How long, oh Lord, must you hide your face from me? How long, oh Lord, will you forget me forever? And then the next part goes, yet I will praise you. I will trust in your faithfulness. Yet I will praise you. My soul must find rest in you. That was a song I wrote when I was going through a lot of hard times. And you know what? It was because church folks thought I was crazy. Really, I have more problems with church folks than lost people. They love me. It was church folks that didn't get me. I was just a little different. You know, they didn't. There's, there's churches in America. If you talk about dreams, they'll think you're weird. You know, if you say you heard from God, they'll think you're a little crazy. Here's another song I wrote. I actually didn't write it. I took the word from the Bible. 
It's Psalm 63, verse 3. I'm not going to sing the whole song. It says, Your loving kindness is better than life. My lips will praise you. And I will bless you while I live. I lift my hands. I take it out of my pocket. <laughs> to your name. <laughs> Get it? My lips will open up and praise you. I'm not going to stick in my hand, in my pocket, and slouch over. I'm going to lift my hands to your name. Praise him with a temporal and dance. Psalms 149 and 150. Praise him with a dance. Okay. Now, i got to tell you guys, I used to party a lot. I like to dance. Okay. I, I used to be a career criminal, so I made a lot of illegal money. I was a gangster. And um, all I did was party. I would work for a few hours and make a lot of money and go party. And I liked to dance. And I liked to have a good old party time, get drunk, drink. But I have to confess, I like pleasure at that time. But I still like pleasure now as a pastor. I still like to dance to different music in the presence of Almighty God and not in the presence of demons. And to a different music that won't pollute my soul and demonize me. You guys get what I just said? And I still like to drink a different kind of wine. <laughs> it's the wine of the Spirit that releases joy. The revelation of Jesus to me is life. It is joy to my heart. It is why I was created. And I keep saying this over and over. You were created to dwell with God. In the beginning, your great this grandfather Adam had perfect fellowship with God. He talked with God. He walked with God. And he messed up. Jesus came back, came to restore to you and I. And until we dwell with God again, we will never be satisfied with anything, any success, any worldly success. But you know what? We can start today by encountering God. When, when the Holy Spirit reveals the beauty and the majesty of Jesus to you and I, we take a drink from the real river of life. That high. I remember praying for this guy who was a drug addict. And I was at a church where they were very conservative. And this was weird to them. It was real different. And he's coming down from all this addiction. And I lay hands on him, pray for him. He falls to the ground and he starts laughing. And he's like, wow, this is the best high I ever got in my whole life. I've been high on everything else, but this is the, I said, you high on the most high. <laughs> and you're not going <laughs> to, and it's not going to leave you demonized. It's not going to leave you depressed the next day with a headache. It will give you joy and hope. And it'll give you supernatural hunger and desire to go after more. One more story. Do you guys want to tell me one more story? Yeah. Okay. This is when I got free from the fear of man. How many guys want to get free from the fear of man? So I was a very new Christian. I didn't know anything. I mean, you guys know. Hey, you guys, I'm going to tell you guys something. You guys are really blessed. You know stuff that I never knew when I was a new believer. Nobody taught me these things. I so wish I had the knowledge that you have, but I had this burning desire to know God. And I went to this church, finally, the first time I went to a church, people were dancing. And something in me said, wow, that's cool, but I was too shy. I was a fear man, it was a fear man. So I got up and I'm like, I was so stiff. And so I started trying to dance. <laughs> <clears throat> and I freaked out. I literally freaked out. It was like the, the spirit of fear in me, okay? But I didn't stop. I said, Lord, I want to praise you like them. All of a sudden, the Holy Spirit who lives inside of me rose up. And I saw nobody in the church. I was like, weird. I was like, they were there. I knew they were there, but it wasn't like they weren't even there. How many of you guys want that kind of freedom? You know what freedom is? It's when nobody's looking at you anymore. That's what freedom looks like, feels like. <clears throat> I began to dance around the church. 
And the, I had been going there for a few times, and the people who saw me do this, they knew something had happened to me. Because I was usually, you know, they can tell I was insecure, very shy, you know. Shy is just another word for fear. Okay. But all of a sudden, they see me just dancing freely and just spinning around. And, and from that day on, I would always, it wasn't hard for me to dance anymore. It was just total freedom. From that day on, I didn't have a problem getting out of my seat. I didn't have a problem spinning around. It was just freedom. Okay. Okay. The Bible says, let everything that has breath praise him. Anybody have breath in here? So you're one of those that are commanded to praise him. So who doesn't praise him? Let me read to you a scripture in the Bible. Psalms 115, 17. The dead do not praise the Lord. So if you do not praise the Lord, could it be that you're dead? Spiritually. And I, I'm not a mean guy. I don't like to pick on people. But I do speak the truth in love. Okay? Last, last scripture and we'll end here. Then we're going to put on some music. Luke 19, verse 37. Then as he was now drawing near the descent of Mount Olive, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice, praising God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen. Saying, now this is referring to Jesus. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees called to him from the crowd, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. It's always the Pharisees that don't like praise. What is the deal with that? But he answered and said to them, I tell you, these should keep silence. Even the stones would immediately cry out. Okay. Even the stones would cry out, would praise him. Okay. Listen to me carefully, guys. If there is a man pleaser, Pharisee, that is still stuck to you anywhere in your soul, and it tells you to stop praising God, you need to tell him to shut up. Because you do not want a rock doing your job. Did you get what I just said? If you say, oh, that's just me, I, this is how I praise God. <laughs> with my hands in my pocket okay this is how I was taught in the church well forgive those false teachers and do the Bible it works I tell you I was a man pleaser praise was what set me free how many of you guys know this is the truth you see people, watch, when they start praising God, their whole lives change. There's power in this. I'll share another dream to you guys, and I'll close. <clears throat> so, just a few weeks ago, I had this dream. We are at BBC, and the worship team were praising God. But, we're just kind of like doing the routine. And I got kind of stirred up. So I ran up on stage. Now this is dreaming, symbolic. It doesn't mean exactly that I'm gonna do this, okay? But it just kind of shows you what God's looking for. I asked the guy for the mic, and I began to sing a new song, Tehillah. And I remember the words, the Lord Almighty omnipotent reigns. Now I never used the word omnipotent. I didn't even know what it meant until I had that dream, and I looked it up, it's, it means all great and powerful, anyway. <clears throat> and I began to sing but like the words came out of me it was a new song it released power and all of a sudden I began to take authority over the spirit of death <clears throat> broke its power and I saw freedom in the church now the dream is symbolic I'm telling you the enemy has tried to silence you. You know what spiritual death looks like? And lack of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Dryness, deadness, no zeal, no passion, no burning desire. 
When we pray, we just kind of pray memorized prayers. There's no utterance. When we worship God, we're just kind of like uh, dictated by our emotions and not by the word of God. Do you know what true emotionalism is? True emotionalism is not the guy that gets excited about Jesus. That's not emotionalism. True emotionalism is people who are controlled by their emotions and not by what they know in their heart. That's true emotionalism. A lot of people, the religious spirits twist it around. Okay? So, y'all don't want to be bound by emotionalism, right? No. Your emotions control whether you should praise God or not. Whether you should witness or not. Whether you should live godly or not. But let the word of God rise up in you. And the presence and power of God take over you. That the joy giver himself who lives inside of you would be, can I tell you what? Holy Spirit knows how to magnify Jesus. That's his job. He is spirit. He doesn't have a body. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. He wants to magnify Jesus through these earthen vessels. He's the joy giver. You don't have joy. You begin to obey his word, begin to praise God, and joy will flow out of you. From your innermost being, peace will flow out of you. Godly wisdom and desire. You, you know, I don't want to read the Bible because it's so boring. Begin to praise God and unlock what's inside of you. You know, the Holy Spirit has desire for the Word of God. You begin to, just begin to allow yourself to be unlocked. That's what he wants to do anyway. Uh, so as Stephen was giving this lesson, I, I, remi I was reminded uh, when I first came to BBC, I had come out of a church that he was just talking about where it was very dead and to even raise your hands would, um, would even like, have, like get old uh, Vietnamese people look at you and they're like, whose son is that? You know, like that's crazy, you know? And so, uh, well, it did help that at the church that I came out of, I had my hair dyed bleach blonde and all that stuff and it was spiked up. But aside from that, when I came to BBC, um, I was I was really like trying to break free from my religious ways. I, I I didn't know, well, actually I didn't even know it until I saw Stephen when he was up front and, and a whole bunch of people. Um, and the way that they were praising, it just there was something about it. When I looked at Stephen, I looked at them. I was like, God, there's something about that 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 you love. There's something about it that it's just it's that you enjoy and it's just you they, they're covered with you and I and I set my heart because I wanted to know what that was I had to know what that was what gave them so much joy what gave them so much freedom and liberty to, to just praise Almighty God and I, I looked at it and I set my heart I was like it bothers me though in the flesh it bothers me because I'm not used to it and it was it was really in my flesh I was just like uh, they're weird Okay, they're weird, but I like it. <laughs> I like it. And so, Lord, I need to know what that is. I need to, I want what they have. And then um, shortly after that, God gave me, I can't remember if it was a dream or a vision, where I saw before, I, I knew that David in the Bible had a reputation for praise. But I didn't know uh, that it was actual scripture or a verse. And in this dream, I saw David as he was on his throne. He stepped down off of his throne. He took off his kingly armor and and uh, his robes and everything. And he began to dance in his ephod, which is his undergarments. But I saw this in a vision or a dream. But I didn't know that was an actual verse, which Stephen just read if you were following along. That that it, the Bible, the scripture said so. So I was revealed this before I even read the scripture. And as I started seeking this out, like in the vision, when he took off those things that kind of kept him bound which is what his pride which is his reputation and all those things and as he stripped those things off like he was praising God and he was sweating and he was yeah I can't even duplicate what he did because it was just so crazy but it was so awesome and he was sweating and he was drenched in sweat but there was so much liberty in it and so when I saw that I was like Lord I want to worship you Set me and it, it released me from
from just a lot of this, uh, you know, and while at the same time, I still struggle with that, but I, I know that when I stand before God, that's why I'm in the front, because Lord, I seek to encounter you up here. With all those people behind me, I don't want to see them, I don't care about them, but Lord, when I'm up front, I want to encounter you. That's what my heart is, that's what I desire. How many guys in here would admit, God, I allow the fear of man to cause me to hold back what belongs to you. I have allowed this in my life, and today I want you to set me free. Maybe like you did Stephen, or however. I say, I want to let it go. I want to finally let it go. I want to be an instrument of praise. I want to be an instrument that opened my mouth and when I begin to sing from my innermost being, shackles begin to fall off people. Every chain fell off the prison inmates. Every chain. <coughs> I'm telling you, there are people at church with chains and shackles. What if we begin to sing praises and their chains fall off and they begin to praise God like they never praised God before? And you get to be a part of it. And you've never even had to preach a message. He inhabits the praises of his people. He dwells in. He is enthroned. His power is released. And people just get free. Okay. How many of you guys say, I want to be an instrument of praise from now on. And I'm tired of the fear of man. And it's not. Let's stand to our feet. But the Lord is good. Thank you. 